Good evening, Connie. Good evening, Tristan. <laughs> G'day, guys. Welcome, Welcome to another TRT Summer Nights. Nights. Sourcing solutions. solutions. Evening here at the TRT Stables. Tonight is an extra special evening. Not just because all you guys are there at home, but we have some other special guests here tonight, Connie. Yes, we have quite an audience. So let us go back a little bit to earlier this year because we reached a very special milestone of having 50,000 members. It's not something I thought of when we started TRT, that that would happen, right? <laughs> no. And also something special happened, what we saw in the online community. People were helping each other, supporting each other, and actually friendships were being made. And it was so special. And there are two people, Edith Mayan and Annika, who are also here, that helped so many people. And we talked about it and we thought, okay, we have to give back to the community. So you flew to the UK to visit Lee. But then we also thought of something else, of inviting a group of members who have been very loyal to the community, helping a lot of people, to this evening, tonight. And then we said, what if we also fly in a member, take care of the hotel and arrange everything, and then we asked the community, okay, who would you pick? Who deserves it? And then there was one name we saw a lot, Sarah. But Sarah's all the way from, she lives just, in... Just like, you know, just, just around, around the, the corner, corner in Sydney, Sydney yeah. Australia. Yeah. <laughs> and you said, well, it's a very intense journey. You, you know that, of course. I'm not sure, sure Sarah's yeah. up for that. If we call her and say, hey, next week, you want to come to my place in the Netherlands? <laughs> yeah. But we did. And, uh, and she's sitting right here, and she made it. And not only Sarah came over, but also Ali from the UK. She just made it just in time, arrived this afternoon. And we London have- From the airport. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the members also here from the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, it's really special. I'm really grateful, so thank you. Amazing to have you guys, guys here, the real TRT VIPs. <laughs> along with a few that couldn't make it, couldn't arrange flights and things like that. But it's of course about the horses, but it's also about us, about the people. And to be able to connect and share our journeys and share our stories and to help each other out and experience the ups and help each other out in the downs. This is actually what life is about. And of course, our life is about horses. So. <laughs> this is how we're doing it. So we're incredibly grateful for you guys to be able to be here and experience another special evening together with us. So let's move to our case study for tonight. Yes, so you guys may have seen some of the promo material. You may have seen something that is familiar. There may be many of you, as I'm sure there's probably thousands, Connie, that are going through or have been through a similar situation. It's of course possibly one of the most important times in the development of our horses, the starting under saddle. Of course, if the situation is ideal, we would also like to start with the horses when they're old enough to stand. We say in TRT, old enough to stand, old enough to learn, two days old, we can begin to teach them what it is they need to do in order to manage their body, to feel their body, to have an awareness of self and to give them all the tools that they need for the environment and the place, our world, our human world in which they're born into. Sometimes we don't get that opportunity, sometimes the education begins a lot of the time in Europe when they are three years old, two and a half years old, they've been in the free stable with another group of young horses, we're letting them be horses which in some cases, of course, is a good thing for horses to be social and have an interaction with other horses, but the primary education of letting them know the world that they're born into is of most importance. And sometimes we have situations where the horses are not getting the information that's necessary. They're, of course, left then to develop their natural instinct of survival, which is built for nature. And we talk many times in the TRT online training about the map, the blueprint that is made for nature and they're using that map in a human environment. So they're trying to survive actually. Yeah. Everything within their instincts is telling them be careful of this, protect yourself with that. 
and often if we're leaving our horses until the period where we have to bring them in as a three-year-old and turn their life upside down and put a saddle on and start shoeing them. Period of time. In a very short, short period of time. time. And then, of course, they've, they've been, been developing this. this. I'm a horse and I'm being <laughs> developing my <laughs> equus, my inner equus of hierarchy and being suspicious of noises. And because I was really sharp in the field when those birds fly, flew up, I was able to protect myself. And now I'm still alive because of that. And I have to keep working mm -hmm. on these natural instincts that Mother Nature gave me in order to survive. And then we bring them into a world where everything is challenging that. The next step, of course, is the breeds have changed. We don't have the horse from 10 years ago. We don't have some of the horses from even five years ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is going, going as fast as technology. As technology. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the development, of course, through breeding and breeding horses that are more athletic, more powerful, more expressive, all of these things also lead to an increase in natural instinct for survival. And so the horse from 20 years ago, we could lunge for 20 minutes and put the whole family on. And in a lot of cases, the way of starting young horses has not developed far from that. No. And, and so, so then, then the difficulty, difficulty is you have a horse with a much higher level of natural instinct, he's much more suspicious, he's been left maybe to develop that predict and protect instinctual part that has been given to him from birth, and then we start to do things to them and with them, without giving them the necessary information of how to process that. What does it mean when the farrier comes in and picks up the foot? That means a big guy comes and we try to hold him and he wrestles him for a while and he gets pissed off because he has a short amount of time to do it and then the horse has a certain experience. And eventually you'll get used to it. Yes. You hope. We hope. But of course the modern horse doesn't. He doesn't get used to it. He gets an accumulation of memories and experience and, and emotions attached to that which is not good, which they don't feel safe with, which creates uncertainty. And so we get into that sort of rhythm through a technical aspect of training that is in a lot of ways very prehistoric in the way of handling horses. And also thinking of horses. Yes. And, and so, so then, of course, when we get into that, we are just continually trying to get that sensitive horse used to something. Okay, if we just put the saddle on every day and we go really quiet about it, and when he's nervous, we're getting on, we just try to lunge him a bit more so he's a bit more tired or we get someone to hold him a little bit stronger we try to contain him restrain him the horse is then going into a fear state he starts to build up that protection the person gets on it doesn't go in a good way or they get the horse ridden in some way without maybe an incident but the insecurity the uncertainty the fear is in the body even if the rider thinks i've gone walk trot and canter in the arena and this, I've ridden this horse, if you are unaware what is actually going on in the body, when the session is over, the anxiety and the predict and protect mechanism in the horse is building up so much that the rider gets off and the horse thinks, oh, thank God I really got into that state of protection and tension because I possibly could have died. And the next time I'm going to be ready. So you're enhancing this natural instinct to, to predict and protect. And so what's important is to be able to set the horse up that the horse is understanding all the elements involved of what we're going to do with them or try to teach them before we do it. So that we're not exposing them to something, sending them to the exam with no experience, with no knowledge about what the answers could possibly be, when they have nothing in the toolbox, they have no understanding of what the answer could be. Of course, they're left to rely on the natural instinct and then you get that cycle again. Also, the way in which we start, when we're thinking about starting the young horses, where do we start? If we think about putting a halter on or maybe even putting the bridle on and then we get into a lunging position, what is the horse actually experiencing in that moment? Is he experiencing we say a lot in the online training, we talk about the elements 
in which the horse is experiencing within the environment, movement, touch, sound and approach. So you have a horse who then experiences the first time, let's say you clip him on the lunge, you bring him into a circle of roundness like this, and then you bring up the level of pressure with movement, possibly sound, his body goes into a reactive state, he goes forward, and then we think, yes, this good boy, now I have him forward, without actually realizing what is happening in the body. And then that the horse has already built a pattern of a poor order of movement. He's not in control. He's reactive to the situation. They're then not moving in an optimal way in their body. The optimal way is the relaxation, opening, flexion, opening the shoulder and engaging the hind leg. If we're starting here, after already have started here, <laughs> controlling, restraining the horse, him not feeling that he's controlling himself, but feeling all the time like he's being controlled. And then we give pressure. The natural instinct is to run away from us and around us. Tension movement pattern. So we're building a body that is actually in the end, the, the map is already written. So even if the horse gets used to the situation, he says, oh, I had a rider on, I have a natural disposition to be a bit calm about life, I get through it, I didn't die when the saddle was on, okay, I can deal with that, I can cope with that, this is not learning, this is forced conditioning. Get on, you ride, the, the rider gets on, but the horse from the beginning has learned a pattern in the body that is not optimal. The future is already written for that horse. This is why we are having horses in sport that are not reaching old ages because the horse is inattention, movement pattern, restriction in the body, separation, segregation, there's no fluency, no symmetry. No, also how they land with their feet, it's, yeah. it's not optimal. So it's, it's not, not just, just about, about getting, getting a horse ridden and, and, and thinking if I'm on him and I'm going around or the cowboy gets on and he goes around that oh, now my horse is ridden. It's nothing to do with education. It's nothing to do with developing a horse in the best way that you can for his body for the way he feels, for his character, all of these things. So today we're going to be looking at that. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and we also have a video in which he explains what happened. So maybe we can have a look. Let's take a look. Hallo, mijn naam is Simone Wiggers en ik ben de eigenaresse van O Camilla. De vierjarige Merrie van de hengst S. Camilo. Um, de Merrie is uh, met drie jaar zadelmak gemaakt. Um, helaas heeft dit uh, niet toegeleid dat ik haar zelf kan rijden. Ze is vier maanden in de africhting geweest, maar ze bleef daarin erg gespannen in het lijf en sloeg vaak af, liep naar achteren en kwam dan omhoog. Um, ja, we hebben haar daar best lang laten staan, maar uiteindelijk verbeterde de situatie niet. Dus hebben we besloten om haar mee te nemen. De winter heeft ze thuis gestaan en in het voorjaar ben ik haar gaan longeren. Dat ging eigenlijk best wel vrij goed en ze was veel relaxter. Um, dus ik heb iemand gevraagd, een professionele zadelmakmaker, om mij hier thuis op te stappen. Um, hij heeft haar echt aangehangen aan de zijkant en dat snapte ze weer niet. En daardoor raakte ze best wel in paniek. En ja, wederom is het niet gelukt. Uh, om haar voldoende zadelmak te krijgen, zodat ik er zelf als amateur op kan. Um, ik heb haar al vanaf uh, veul af aan, dus ik vind het erg jammer dat het tot nu toe niet gelukt is. En ik wil het eigenlijk graag nog een kans geven. Dus vandaar dat ik bij Tristan Tukker uitkom. So, welcome, Simona. <laughs> he did a very nice job bringing her quietly in. So guys, we have Simona here and Camilla. Camilla for short. That may get shortened even more. Now that she's in an, an Australian circle of roundness, it could be Millie. <laughs> so in the beginning, guys, then we have a little assessment. Like in all our live streams, we get to start to see what's happening. We're all looking, 
what we have to be able to do is see. And so you guys know a little bit the story now. And what I start to be able to see from the combination is that Camilla has a very deep attachment to Simona, to mum. <laughs> and you see the look on Simona's face that <laughs> this is very much a, mum, a mummy-daughter relationship. So, which works to a point. So Camilla was of course born, bred by Simona, and then you see a horse that comes into a space where she has a lot of insecurities. She doesn't know what to do with herself, with the people that are sitting on the benches on the far side. She doesn't know what to do with herself when she sees my lavish tool bag on the side here. But she has some reassurance from mum. So the time spent in the beginning was, a, was healthy. You can see that they have quite a good bond. Simone is able to give us some reassurance in a situation where she has no clue what she's doing. She's just following mummy and if mummy stays calm, I will also stay calm. I'm sure if I just clap my hands or I rub my shirt, if I lift the energy in the space just a little bit, then the scene would get very exciting very fast. So meaning that the reassurance and, and learning to have a good connection, a good relationship with your horse, is a good place to begin. But the reassurance runs out really quickly. So where the knowledge is running out of knowing what to do with themselves, that can be a little bit compensated by the reassurance. But when the challenge of the situation, the energy goes up, a horse runs by, a dog runs by, you start to get the rain on the roof of the indoor, you start to try to put a saddle on or put a cowboy on and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> when you start to be asked serious questions, then of course the reassurance runs out. Then you really need the knowledge of knowing how to manage themselves. So what I like to do is to view that in the beginning. That gives me an idea here how much the horse is able to manage themselves. What are they good at? What are they not good at? What is she relying on? And I like to see the interaction between the owner and the horse. That also gives me a good starting point. So when I start, then I, no, I try to take the same energy as Simona in the beginning. I'm going to be giving her quickly some sound advice about how to feel comfortable in her own skin. But I also like the combination just to be able to walk here. As she's walking, I'm focusing on taking my energy really down into the ground that I'm slowing my energy, changing the feeling, the sensation in the space, and that everything starts to get a little calmer. So she's not coming into this space straight away thinking, what's he going to do to me? Why am I here? Why are the people there? Why are the camera people there? What the hell is the bag there? The, oh, there's a saddle there. I hope that's not going on me tonight. But we can start to relieve her of all that by letting her come into the space letting her be in the comfortable reassurance situation, and then we can go from there. So you can see quickly she starts to explore. She's starting to smell the ground a little bit. But there still is this small friction between she's in control and then she has to be restrained. And so then the self-management system from the beginning is where we need to start. So you've done an extremely good job. I always like it when the owner comes in and they don't get killed in the beginning, Simona. <laughs> you come in and she runs you down and she's, <laughs> this is not a good start. <laughs> so I can take her, say bye to mummy just for a short period and then we can start to see. It's okay. Yep. It's good. Okay, Connie will show you where to stand and then we can have a chat in between. Hi, young lady. So the important part a bit again is I'm not thinking of creating some input in the beginning. 
I'm just letting her feel where my energy is a little bit. So if we had a horse that was jumping around, that was kicking and looking like she was going to do herself some harm or me some harm, then I would respond a little bit differently. <coughs> so you see straight away in the beginning, then we, mummy's walking up into the seat, and then you get the predict and protect posture right away. This is, oh, I better make sure that I'm protecting myself in this situation. So already I can start to create some awareness in, in that. So here again, somebody moving, and then I just create some awareness in the part of the body that goes into tension without touching her. And then the first response is to go from an external distraction to an internal focus. So here again, now suspicious. Then we get into when there's pressure in the environment. This is normal lunging reaction. This is what we do when there's energy in the space or we don't know what to do, we just start to run around. And then the normal process is the rider has to try to stop the horse. And then you get the conflict and the friction between going and stopping. And when you have two energies clashing, where does that go? This way. So I don't really do anything much in the beginning other than bring some awareness to herself. I don't try to control her. I just bring some awareness to her body. And every time she brings herself from there to here, then I take the focus away. So I'm thinking I have a sensation of this part of the body. And then I have a thought of this part of the body. And then the body language goes to this part of the body. And when she goes from an external distraction, and she comes to an internal focus, she starts to think about herself, then I take that awareness away from her. So the first part is to be able to bring the attention and the focus to herself. And when a horse can go from the external to the internal focus, that's the beginning of the process of it being about self. Not about controlling the environment, controlling the people up there, controlling the weather. <laughs> it's a, the definition of exhaustion to try to control everything in your environment. So I let her just feel a little bit the body and she can search for a connection from me, she can be bringing focus to herself and when she starts to have more internal focus instead of external distraction, we have already started to give her some information <coughs> about what she has to begin to focus on, that it's not about what's going on out there, it's about what's happening here. <clears throat> so we start there and then we start to give her some small reference to where she is within the space and where she is in relation to me. So she has some spatial awareness. Some of you might have heard these words recently on one of my podcasts when I spoke to my father-in-law as a visual optometrist, learning about spatial awareness, being able to balance and measure where you are in the space. So what's important about the way I teach her this is that my focus is not on controlling her, telling her where to be. It's not about discipline, it's not about respect. It's about the awareness of where you are in the space. So my body language has to be in a way that I'm not putting energy at her. I'm not trying to control her. If I was trying to control her and it was about discipline, I would already have pushed her away again. And no, don't be here. It's not about me controlling you. It's about me giving some awareness to the space that I want you to focus on. This part right here, this tiny bit of 
fluff that I've spread in this arena <laughs> is really, really important. And this is the part that's going to give you some spatial awareness. It's going to give you an idea of where you are in the space and where you are in relation to me. And when you start to realize this is a really important space, then you can relieve yourself of all the other jobs. Why am I here? I have to watch what that little bird's doing over there because it could be getting suspicious. And then here, being able to self-regulate. When I slow down, she starts to slow down. It's not about me demanding her attention. Only focus on me. You can't learn if you're not listening. She can also develop this awareness of looking there, feeling okay that she's still got one eye, but she has an awareness of where I am in the space. So being able to measure this. And from the beginning, if we can give them some sound advice about something, and that they can be making a good de decision about that, she starts to feel from the very beginning that she's a good decision maker. She can make her own decisions. And she can self-regulate. Look at this spot right here. And that she can self-soothe. It's the beginning of realizing the physical action you take is going to determine how you feel. <clears throat> and not that she feels she needs to be in my lap to feel safe. What we have to teach her in the end is that she is feeling safe when she's not with you. She's feeling safe when she's in the stable. She's feeling safe when she's in the field. She's feeling safe when she goes into a new trailer that doesn't smell the same, look the same. <clears throat> and that she can give herself that feeling. Now she has an internal predict and protect mode. The physiological reaction in her body is a reflex for survival all the time. This is created from humans. This is not the breed or the father or the fact that she's a modern horse or a <coughs> she's going to have more of a natural disposition for that but it's created by experience so first part of the learning be aware of the space that you're in measure the space and the distance between you and me energy up energy down I'm going to equal the advice to the level of awareness. If she has no awareness and she's going straight over the space, then I'm going to be a little bit more, oh, shh, don't forget about this. Oh. And maybe if she's having a small moment where she's not quite aware, Then we go a little bit easier with the reminding her of the space. And so by equaling the advice to the level of awareness, she starts to develop a sharper eye, more millimeters. So she has the stop. In the end, she will be able to regulate also the slow steps. So when you measure it better, you don't feel that I've stopped, but you feel I've slowed down. You start to regulate that in your body. So this is the first part. We don't have to get this part perfect. It's just to get plan to see, to give an idea about this first part of the regulation. This is also about the teaching to her before doing to her. So things that we're going to start to do, we want to just be able to think about this. But if we haven't explained it, we can't expect that she can guess what it is. We go further into the awareness. So the first part we did with hardly touching her. <coughs> and I'm not 
too interested in the change of position. It's not about her dropping the head and becoming relaxed. It's about her feeling the body, feeling that this muscle is becoming really tense, staying with that muscle, letting it go a little bit more in tension. Then when it starts to relax, then take the pressure away. So the act of having contact on the body is enough to create the awareness. We don't have to think, oh, good girl, this is what I want. Oh, please put your head down. No, just feel. Don't have too much internal dialogue. Don't have too much intent. Just let her start to feel what the body is doing. She will also feel more the flies in that moment. <laughs> and so she starts to learn what's going on in the body. Because, of course, there is a lot of things created by experience that is causing a reflex reaction in her body that is part of her unconscious. She's not aware her body go, does, does this. She's aware of the thoughts afterwards from feeling that. Oh shit, what's going on now? Why is my body in the, in the alert mode? <coughs> so here again, contraction of the stomach. Oh. So I stay with it. When she starts to breathe against my hand, then I oh, relax the body again. We go back here, what's happening here, feeling this in the body. Feeling what's happening realizing that you have control of this. You don't have to be a slave to the physical reaction in your body caused by the element in the environment. <clears throat> so, if we were to say in the beginning, in some basic training of starting a young horse, would you say, everybody at home, that it would be pretty important that you can touch your horse before you ride it? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have one of those hovercraft saddles. <laughs> you say, I'm just going to sit on this horse and I'm not going to touch it for the first three months I ride it. <laughs> then you have to do this every time you get on. You have to trust the small girl holding the lunge rope or it's going to chase you on the ground. So again, we give her the feeling of what's going on, that she's not in a tension movement pattern. But when she feels contact, her first non-conscious reaction, it's happening, it's a reflex, non-voluntary reaction in her body that's caused by that experience. The body is now in a state of protection all the time. A non-voluntary, meaning she has no choice the body is protecting itself, going into a reflex reaction. So she's not only a slave to the situation and what's happening to her, she's not even in control of her own body reactions. And the thing is, what we're doing to the horses through the process of becoming a riding horse or training them or educating them for someone, is you are creating physiological reactions in the horse's body that becomes a pattern in which they have to live with in the 23 hours they're not with you. So it's not only that she's ah, a bit sensitive when we sit on or she's a bit sensitive when we put our foot in the stirrup. She now has this in her body all of the time. She has to live in this body. She has a phobia to the space in which she lives in. All the little things that happen around her make her body go <coughs> oh, oh. <laughs> She's in a state of fear all the time. So it's these things on the modern horses that we have to be aware of. It's not about just getting the saddle on and getting them done. And don't get me wrong, I have also been through that process. 
I was also making a living by getting a saddle on and sitting up and going walk, trot and canter and sending the horse back. <clears throat> but I was also not aware of the influence I was having on the horses. And it's this part that's really important. And a lot of people think in the beginning, well, I don't have time to stand there and bloody hold a horse in the crutch. I've got to get this thing ridden. Bloody clients are waiting. I've got to make a living. I've got to get these horses broke. I can tell you, I can get the horse riding sweetly for the beginner in much less time than it takes to lunge it every day for four months and still not be able to get on. So spending some time in the beginning on building a good basis, a good awareness of how they can be in control of themselves is only going to help you and the horse. In the end, it's something I've branded the lazy horsemanship technique. <laughs> Some of you might have seen my no horse natural ship demonstrations. It's of no means of mocking horsemanship or anything of the likes. <laughs> but it's to show that you don't need to man up or have incredible skills of getting around a horse without offending them. I also got good at that. That's how I'm still alive today. Get, got good at a technique about creating some trust and some connection. The horse didn't feel threatened by me and in 20 minutes I could get on and ride walk, trot and canter. That's also not what you'll see tonight because that's not going to help you. I can do it and if you're doing thousands of horses <laughs> and all the man killers, you get handy. You know where to go, what not to do. You know exactly what they need to be able to respond to in order to be safe and to get it done. But that doesn't help you. The demonstrations where you take the horse and you lunge it a bit and some guy that can sit really good on them, he climbs on and the other lion from the ground is chasing and one line on the back and he can ride the buck and it's not too much problem. They get the horse to go forward. <clears throat> and it makes a nice show and they think, yeah, they got the job done. He was riding it in 20 minutes. That doesn't help the horse. You can better take that guy to the rodeo where he has to sit on some real horses or, <laughs> or some bulls that buck and make some money. But it's not helping the horse. So here it's about this self-knowledge, self-awareness. What is my body doing? So while I've been yabbering, now we don't have a, a reflex reaction. I take her now in the flank and I lift the flank up and the body relaxes instead of going into tension. And this is the important part. She should not be offended by her own body because then she will be definitely offended by yours. <laughs> if she's offended by her, the reaction of her own skin, and you put saddle on, bridle on, girth on, foot in the stirrup, it's going to be a few other things that offend her as well. So it's that part. Again, it doesn't have to be mastered. It just has to be the beginning of getting an idea of what that's about. And that the body has, starts to have some relaxation and some rest. Because when we start to move the feet and we find out the good order of movement, it has to start with the relaxation. She has to start in this a mindset. We can now have an easy, or well, the beginnings of an easy communication, conversation. So this is the beginning bit. If you go and you see someone giving a starting, breaking in, subtle muck mark or whatever demonstration, and the first thing is the horse is running around and someone's holding onto it, then you can better leave. Because that horse is not going to learn anything, and you won't either can learn what not to do. You can learn something. <laughs> so the first part is the relaxation. It's not about getting them going, getting them moving. Control the feet, you control the horse. She has to feel she's in control all of the time. And then you have a horse that prepares themselves and when they learn to prepare themselves, they don't need you to control them. Then you have the horse that you go to ride the transition, they prepare themselves and you go, oh that was easy. <laughs> you can sit and enjoy the ride. 
and that should be the same from the very beginning with everything you do. Also the first ride, your first ride, walk, trot, canter, maybe not canter if the horse is not super balanced, but your first ride in the saddle should be with balance, with suppleness, relaxation. You should be able to ride between something, over something, under something. <laughs> yes, you normally do this with mummy? Okay, I will do this a little bit as well. <laughs> Don't eat my fluffy thing, will you? So then we start to move a little bit and we start to see where the natural balance goes. So where's the direction of energy in the body? And we want to see where the balance point is. So when we start to guide the body, what happens? Through movement, what starts to happen to the body when we start to move? Does it go more up into a position of protection when we start to move? Or does it go into relaxation? So when we start to move, we, what, ha like, what happens here? <laughs> you don't, everybody's looking, but everybody can also see. Move the feet a little bit, and she's in this state of readiness. Predict and protect again. So, tension movement pattern. When she moves, she's going to start to get into this state of being spooky or being insecure, being uncertain. So if one little step with the front legs changes the thought pattern and the whole physiological reaction to predict and protect, yeah, try go in trot and in canter. I mean, every step is going to get her into a state of insecurity. So we have to change the pattern in the body so she has a different meaning, purposeful movement that creates relaxation. When I move, it makes me feel good. Not when I move, it puts me into a state of fear. So we start again to open. The most important part is the explanation here. So afterwards, so remember what we talked about in the beginning, teaching to her before doing to her. So if I start to move the feet now, I want her to be thinking about this relaxation. But I can't hope that she guesses without an explanation. Here movement, yes, yes. So the first part of when I get on and ride, how do I turn right? Oh, I can't. <laughs> well, we better install that first. <laughs> Can I turn right? Because I don't just want to ride on the left rein. And when I start to move, I don't want that movement to be only in tension. So freeing up the feet. So we get some stickiness in the beginning because of the tension movement pattern. So the body already becomes a constrict, is constricted from the tension going in first. So we go back, where should you start the movement? You should start the movement in this position. Not in this one. If you start like this, the only way you can go, <laughs> yes, <laughs> up. <laughs> so this is the start of the movement, teaching them how to move. Opening up the shoulder. So the explanation of how we move. This is also important that we don't just think, ah, move the feet. Like, where are the feet moving? What is the body doing in preparation to move the feet? Are you just moving them a lot and then hoping in the end that they guess what that sensation, what that order of movement should be in the body and that that guess is optimal? No, you have to shape that in order for their body to serve them. Because if the body's not serving them, it's only then going against them. So again, opening up to the right. <coughs> and because she's a little bit north facing. I teach her to step, not there, <laughs> behind and across. She knows the forward from all the lunging. You can see how much the front legs are stuck in the ground. Behind, across, behind, across. Yes, and when we finish a movement, how does that make us feel? How do you feel in the body? So bringing an awareness all the time, I make a connection underneath the girth 
and also on the neck. Because I don't, because she's doing this all the time, she's very tight also in the sternum. She's pulling like this all of the time. She's in the tension gym. And so if we get the head down, we don't get ah, this. So the connection has to be from here and from here. <clears throat> And so this is now helping because she's listening to the drone. So she's about to go into an external distraction or an internal focus. When she comes to the internal focus, again, relaxing. I go to the front legs the other side. Why I start with the front legs is because of this. If I go straight to turning the hind leg, she's going to get more with the front leg in the ground and spinning the back instead of relaxing, opening the front. So when we ride, what is the first thing we want them to do when we sit on? Relax, yes. <laughs> Very good, Simone. You're talking through body language already. You will master this in <laughs> no time. <laughs> so this feeling of relaxation when we get on. And then we want flexion. And then we want them to open up the front leg to bring the hind leg to take a nice relaxed step. If that's not installed, or you install something else, which is what we have, then you're not going to get the right step. You're only going to get a terrible feeling when you first go <clears throat> in your first step on the saddle. So it's all here about the preparation. And you see that because of the contraction, how unbalanced she is. Everything gets tied in the beginning. I just give her a little bit of an idea of the direction. Oh. And then I want to be able to go back to the explanation of the body behind the cross. This is good, but I want you to start to feel this. What's going on here? Yes. So that the movement's not creating this tension. So the explanation is the most important point. Most of the time in the horsemanship frame of mind, ah, she's sticky in the feet. Get the feet moving, take the pressure up without explanation having to get them tired, yes, and the thing is what's important about this is you're going to be able to do all these things. This doesn't take you to be, you know, a brave person that gets on everything and is, you know, can manage it and if it bucks doesn't matter. No, you're going to be able to set all these things up and what you learn from that is the communication. How do I open the right rein and turn right when I first get on? How should that feel? So you have an awareness yourself of what that's going to feel like before you sit there. Again here, what's going on? So it's going to have to be something that's repeated in the beginning because every step she takes, it gets her slowly in the tension again. Good girl. And then left front again. This is better. Not forwards. Oh. Yes. Yes. And so what generally happens, yes. Oh, what generally happens when the horses are going into that unprepared forward running lunging pattern is they get the tension, which hollows the back, puts the front legs in the ground, and then you have no way actually of freely going forward. You have panic and the hind legs running forward like they learn on the lunging. And then when you get on and you try to go somewhere, <laughs> you're already put the handbrake on in front, and then if you push, but the front doesn't go, yeah, then you are going this way. So the physiological pattern you create in the body is giving you the symptom, the rearing or not forward, or, and then they get in panic so much that the <laughs> then you get a lot of forward. <laughs> so the opening up is this, relaxation, allowing the horse to go forward. Good girl. And again, we don't have to master it, 
but it's just the beginning of the awareness. How do you turn right? Ah, oh, why did the hell didn't someone tell me that before? I just learnt how to turn right and I'm old enough to know better. <laughs> so here, again, flank, what's happening? Good, relaxation when we bring an awareness to the hind leg. So I want you to again relax before you move the leg. I touch where my leg goes when I ride. And then I want flexion. Yes. And then outside front leg, inside hind. So you see what happens here again. Front leg stuck in the ground. And then what happens is the shoulder will want to come onto you. So falling into the rain, the rider has to restrain. Conflict again, running backwards or a lot of pressure with the inside leg or someone chasing you, making more tension from the inside with the lunge, all of these things. So I bring an awareness to opening the front first. Yes. And then I go, okay, now make the connection here with the hind. Yes. Yes. This step. And then when we take a forward step with relaxation, flexion, showing the opening of the front, the explanation, and then the engagement of the hind, what happens here in the body? What does it feel like when you walk like that? When you have a connection and a symmetry in your body, the way you move has to bring you to this state of relaxation, feeling like you're in control of yourself. Not so much that you get in a coma, but <laughs> that when you move, you feel okay. Can you imagine if, if every time you move, you don't feel okay? Every time you move, you don't feel safe. Something's getting you, t attacking you. If you feel the level of tension in her body, this is like a horror movie every time you move. And that's the important part we have to understand. And of course, nobody, nobody is heading out to do this. We're only approaching something to the best of our ability and with the knowledge we have. But without the awareness of what's actually happening, we can create things that are very traumatic. So now we get a very nice, this is our first step. Yes, it was amazing, wasn't it? We did the first step where we put the leg on and she went, ah. Oh, I can take a nice step. Wow, that felt good. It's the first step you want when you get on to ride. Put the inside leg on. What does that mean? <laughs> That's what it meant in the beginning. It means relaxation. It means flexion. It means take a step where you're connected. Same on the other side. I'm going to make a prediction that we need to ask her to open the left front first. Because probably when we put the right leg on, she does the same. Blocking. So I... Help her here first, behind, and she'll do a few Michael Jackson moves, dragging the feet. In the end, the relaxation, yes, well, the flies help me there. Flank, good. Inside leg, yes. So then we get stuck again, left front turning in the ground, and then right front has to come on my toes in the end. So the explanation, left front, yes. Right hind, good, good. Left front, good. Right hind, yes. <laughs> so then there's going to be small moments where you have to make a decision. She went into tension, do I then stop and say, what's happening in your body? Or do we also try to work through it a bit in certain moments? So I have to feel what I'm going to do in that situation. And that has to fit you. That's nothing to do with what's ideal for the horse. It's the conversation you're having there. Also now she walks towards me, so ready for the next step, yes, 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 good, 
<clears throat> What's also important is giving her the moment to have what does that feel like in my body. It's not how much you do, but how many moments you can allow her to feel what she is doing. Yes. 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 Relaxing again. Going through the explanation. How did that feel? Are you in control of the body? Good. You don't have any tension in any parts of the body? No. Good. <laughs> that everything is staying loose? Good. So again, this is the first pattern. This is actually pretty much textbook TRT first pattern. Some of the members are going, no, no, in the videos you do the hind leg first. <laughs> but it is this basic order of movement in the feet. This is the first pattern. So we're changing the order of movement, the conversation, the dialogue. <clears throat> what her body is saying to her when she moves. Everything I ask from her now is the same, but from a different position. It gives me more distance, which gives the horse more responsibility, more feeling of them, self-soothing, feeling the body more. I can create more impulsion. <clears throat> so the whip is just an extension of my arm. I have to also make sure that the meaning of the whip is good. But what have I done from before? I'm teaching to her before doing to her. What I taught her with my hand, I can now guide her with the whip. Otherwise I put the whip on and I've never explained anything about a whip before and I have no foundation, no tools in there to help her when she gets it wrong. So then I'm up shit creek without a paddle. So teaching to her before doing to her. So I make contact on the neck. Neck goes slightly in tension. If she goes really in tension, I can take the whip away and go back to my hand if necessary. So back to the explanation. This is again, not about if she starts moving, I just keep her in the bend and I keep the whip there until she miraculously guesses what she should do and when she stops I take it away and that's how she learns. Approach and retreat, you know, whatever. It's about the explanation. It's lazy horsemanship. Don't be letting them run around for 10 minutes guessing what the hell they should be doing. You have to have the ex explanation and the teaching to them before doing to them. Whip in the flank What's happening? Does it create something here? So this is the trigger, the part of the body that goes into the tense posture. So later when I ask her to move from the whip, when the whip touches it, I don't want her to be protecting herself. The whip is something she has to follow, not something she has to move away from. There's the difference between lunging and majestical, magical, spiritual, amazing TRT method. That was not a promotion, that was just a phrase I like to use. <coughs> so <laughs> lunging is of course going to create contraction movement. They're going to be moving away from something, they're not going to be following. The horses that decide I'm not going to run away, I'm going to protect myself from blocking, are the horses you have to sweat and uh, for three months to get them forward. And the horses that are super sensitive are running are the ones you have to ride for three months not touching them with the leg. Because they're not following the leg, they're moving or running away from it. So this is the simple explanation of that. So uploading the software of how to follow the leg aid. She's like, just get on with it, stop talking. <laughs> so then when we start to move, we're asking for a forward step. When I feel the front leg is getting stuck, I first go back to this, the movement and opening of the front leg from a distance, and I also make some reference to a space on the ground. This is also something we did before, the first leading exercise. So I'm not then saying move the front, 
because for her this would mean being up there. <laughs> so teaching her the first leading exercise means I can connect that to this. Here, opening. Yes. And then connection from inside hind to outside front. This step. This step. Yes. So diagonal pairs. The optimal relaxation, flexion, open the front, connect the hind. When they trot, diagonal pairs. <laughs> Opening, creating bend. You don't just need the circle of roundness to create bend, you can do this <laughs> in the body. <laughs> And this then creates what we call in the online training the shape for the carrying posture, for the horse's perspective. So this is her natural position of carrying when she makes this connection. This is not made from the reins or a side rein or a slough togel or a draw rein or, or something created from the human, we stylize, we want this shape, she should look like this in the neck, creating a pattern or a shape that's what we visually want to see, but it's a pattern that is fitting her body, her skeleton, her length, her conformation, her conversation in the body. This is then leading her towards a pattern which she will use in, all, in the 23 hours she's not with you. She will walk then in the field like this, and not like this, she's going to eat some grass, <laughs> she's going to get a drink of water, <laughs> you know, she's now moving in a way that makes the body more healthy. One more time, the left side is more, um, is easier for her, so then I do more on the left in the beginning because I wanted to feel the technique, I wanted to understand the concept and what is the sensation, what does this feel like? Yes, so we get a little bit some artificial frame from the rain. This is because of the uh, lunging with the side reins and the slough. So you get, a, you get an artificial going away from the contact, which again puts the weight in the feet. So sometimes I will walk a little bit backwards to encourage it to go into the rain. Front legs the other side, not forwards, yes, not forwards, behind, yes, and then, yes. So I move a little bit to help the freedom of the left front, this step, when, if she got too quick, or she started to get tense, I would leave the whip against her so that again she's following. So you see the stickiness in the outside front, so there's no symmetry, no continuation of movement. So every time we have to get her to move, we have to be chasing her or pushing her or kicking her. And then she feels, of course, like she's being made, being forced at one end. And if she willingly wanted to go forward, she couldn't because her body puts the handbrake on. Same the other side, yes, good, I start to blend the two sides, yes, so left front needs more space, this step, sometimes I take the whip a little here to think about this part of the body, maybe she goes a little bit in tension first, I can then leave the whip there to gain the relaxation or stopping again and then going with the hand to let her think about this part. Good. And then I work a little bit more on the front legs again. Yes. So turning right. Yes.
Yes. Oh. Explanation again. Good. So all progression is uphill. So we start with the soft explanation and then I start to say, here, can you get from point A to point B? <laughs> yeah, I think I can. <laughs> so, yeah, you got from point A to point B. Now let's try to get from point A to point B with some fluency, with some moments where you feel like your body is working for you. Yes, yes. There I go away. <clears throat> Girl. Same on the other side. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. So this continuation of the opening up of the front leg allows these first relaxed forward steps. Redirect, opening here. How do I change direction and open the front legs the other way? Good. And then we change this bit. Yes. Shape for the carrying posture. Inside leg on. What is the meaning of my inside leg? Not this tension. So I go back to the flank. If I get more tension, I don't. But if I did, I go to this again. What's happening here? This is loose. Good. I go again. I get on. I open my right rein. Yes. I put my left leg on. Good. We go forward on the circle. I keep my inside leg on. Ooh, ooh. Keep the inside leg. Whip in the flank. Remember about this part of your body. That's the part of your body that has to stay relaxed. So again, teaching to her before doing to her. She has a little bit more. But normally when I go now, I get in panic. So yeah, normally. But think about the new things we've just installed. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, relax here, ah, bend here, connection here. Ah, that's good, that's good. <laughs> so the mentorship, <laughs> not controlling her, not telling her, oh, it's okay, good girl, good girl. She's like, oh, but it doesn't feel okay, don't tell me it's okay. But really guiding her in that moment. We start on the left, again, for the same obvious reason. It's easier on the left for her. Inside leg, yes, this feeling. And then we want the relaxation here. So I start to push down in the rhythm of the trot. Down, 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 down. And then I slow my whip down. Oh, so she follows the speed of the whip. <clears throat> so again, the following is the opposite to a contraction. This is the opposite to being in the V-shape lunging position. We're going to try the other side too. Left front. Good. Inside leg. Good. Whip in the flank. Yes. Very good. And then I go again here to get a deeper awareness of this part of the body. Yes. So when she goes into trot, we start relaxed. The engagement of the movement starts relaxed. We're relaxed during and we're relaxed at the end. So the cycle of motion is without tension. And this is also the beginning of... It, it depends also on what your definition of tension is. My definition of tension is a contraction, an involuntary contraction in the body. So this is, and I make that definition because people talk about a healthy level of tension. Maybe they're using the word tension when they mean stability. The horse has to be stable. There is then, of course, some contraction 
in the muscle, but it's an open functionality. It's not a involuntary closing, retracting of the body. So during the movement, relaxation before, during and after. Good. Inside leg. Now I really have to push. Good. Yes. And for me that's really important on a horse like this. That I can, in the end, this is what I want when I get on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Good girl. Oh, no. Not like that. <laughs> That's the moment in the saddle where I go, Whoo! <laughs> not so fast. <laughs> Good. Again, in the flank. If I got to a place where I was really running after her there, then I would go back to the shape, to the carrying posture. Good. When she slows down, again, being out of touch here. So while I'm riding, while I'm trotting, can I reach back and Rubber on the butt, redirection, good, left front, yes, yes, inside leg. So everything to do with the groundwork, different to lunging, is connected to the riding. I'm riding inside leg to the rein, also what we want to do when we start to ride and get some fluency, some connection with right hind and left front. This makes the shape of the circle. And then here, you. So many people breaking in horses in Europe that I would love to take back to Australia and put them on the rodeo circuit. <laughs> We have some really good pilots in Europe that don't even have to do this and they get on and try to ride. <laughs> I touch it with the whip and think, oh God, <laughs> not getting on this one until it's been through the program. <laughs> Purely again because of the knowledge. Because she doesn't know what to do with herself. Good. So inside leg in trot. Follow, 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 follow. Yes. Make length in the body. Make length in the body when something touches you, not contraction in the body when something touches you. Good girl. So then we start. Now we've got some basics of the self-awareness, management of self, good pattern, good order of movement, being able to make a transition, Letting something touch you and not running off. These basic things. And then we can start to apply that self-management with the experience of some of the elements that you will face in the environment. So that we don't have to ride the first few weeks in a like taped off area in the riding school. <laughs> you put the police tape up in a small square to keep us in a, and shh, I'm about to get on the young horse we haven't ridden successfully yet. Do, lock the dogs up and the kids and tell the birds to be quiet and turn the radio off. <laughs> now we can teach her that there are things in the human environment that come unexpectedly. Things that make a noise, things that move, things that touch you. And these, it, this is important that she learns the management of herself, what to do with herself in that moment. <clears throat> so we need the posture for success. Here. This feeling. What is the yes posture? The drawing towards something. Be the chaser, not being chased. So I'm connecting now to her front legs. Open up. So again, teaching to her before doing to her. We've been working a lot on the front leg to be able to get this. So this is the opposite than this part. 
and we want when she's faced with something in the space we want her to go <sighs> I could probably just walk straight into that instead of the body getting into tension and she's saying oh everything inside me is saying I want to go that way and then we start to get this drawing of the front the explanation of what to do in the body. What is the sensation in your physiology that allows you to feel like you are in control? What is the sensation in your body? <clears throat> yes. Left front. Yes. Keep drawing away. So I'm connecting to the feet through the bag. Left front again. Yes. This feeling. Good. Every time she makes contact, we go away. So the first time something touches her, a foreign object, she's doing the touching. And so she's learning to set up her body for something approaching and touching her. If you have to put the saddle on, if you have to put the saddle blanket, if you have to approach to put your foot in the stirrup, what's happening in the body when you approach with something? She's not doing anything that's going to make it successful. <laughs> to get on. You need some very talented people to restrain and contain and hold on. <clears throat> so what is this part of the learning? How do they learn this bit? And it's again connecting the dots, teaching to them before doing to them, opening up the front legs, telling the body to do the opposite. If you have a contraction this way, don't hold the bag there until they guess what they should do that is the opposite that what their body's doing under reflex body's contracting take the tool away people say oh no i can't take the tool away because then you'll learn that contraction is what we want but if the explanation is directly after that the body says oh don't touch me and then i take it away I go but what if you do this oh yeah now it feels but now now try to touch me so what is it that they have to feel in their body what is it they have to do with themselves to, in order for them to feel in control? Connection, relationship is one thing, and that's, it's fine. But when you go away, does that horse have the same confidence with somebody else? Is that horse still okay when he's not with you? So again, I go to the reminding, the awareness of the body. We touch, we start rubbing with the plastic on the neck, on the body parts that go into tension. And now I bring an awareness here. She has very good peripheral. She can multitask really well. She can be looking at the fly and going, yeah, I'm feeling you Aussie guy over there. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> so this part is really important. We go to all the parts that cause tension in the back. What's happening here? If someone sits here, if there's the weight of the saddle, what happens in the body here? Is she aware of what happens in the body here? We go to the flank, plastic in the flank. What's happening here? So now I guide her into the shape. I don't want the contraction and the running. I want the connection here, this step. Diagonal pairs, this step. Come into the control shape. Don't get in tension and start running away. Think about the connection in your body. That's going to bring you to a state of control. Same again. In the flank. And when they know what it is they have to do with themselves, you take the reason away from having to be uncertain, insecure. They're not uncertain because they're like, ah, I know what to do here. I don't need to have this feeling of protecting myself. <clears throat> a little bit same on the other side. And then I just go through and I feel all the bits. Are they reactive under the butt or in the flank or on the belly or on the legs? What part of the body is not confident, that has still some contraction in there, that has a little flinch? What's happening here? Good. Then we go 
do a little bit more movement. So again, we're dealing with the element of movement and what happens to the body. Does she already get in a <laughs> state of readiness? The hind legs are shaking, I don't know what to do. Oh, or do we have some quickly some self-management? I don't want that sensation in my body. And now slowly we teach her that she has the power to control how she feels. If she gets to control the body, she gets to learn to control herself. She controls all situations. So we can either here keep the tool on and at the same time remind her in the body what to do. Or if the situation gets that she's really giving the wrong answer, one plus one is 3,099 with all the kinds of tension. Then I take the tool away and I go back and I give some awareness to the body, the explanation, what to do. So we're, it's, we're running out of light here, so I'm going to have to just sling the saddle on, chuck my boots and helmet on and just jump on it from the side of the fence and go a couple of rounds in canter, just so that this live stream is impressive enough for all the idiots that didn't see the first bit that I tried to explain. Someone's still waiting to see the cowboy get on the horse and make a bloody mess of it. <laughs> Change the channel, go somewhere else. <laughs> so here, again the movement and again, external distraction, oh, to the internal focus. <clears throat> And now, Simona, can you see where the dots are starting to join together? This process will just follow into putting the saddle on the first time, putting the girth on the first time, doing these tools while the saddle is on. What happens when you've got the saddle on and something goes over your back from left eye to right eye? A human is going to do that when he gets on. How do you feel about that? What does your body do when you, when you feel that the first time? And so you're simulating all of the things. Bridle on the same. When you put the bridle on, is the horse also able to open the front? Or does the bit make the horse already in this false contraction posture? Go through it on the bit, open the front, turn the hind. We're walking on the track the first time. We go in trot, we slow down, we back up, we do all these things. And then the last step is you only have to do this. And she knows everything else. Getting on the magical way. Stand on the block and say, she comes to you. This is different than someone holding her while somebody sneaks on. If the body is drawing and saying, here's the saddle, I'm ready for you to ride. Or you take her and hold her and someone is sneaking on, hanging on, and the body's already like this. Yeah, it's a, like night and day. A little bit the noise. What happens in the body? What just happened in your body? <laughs> so the awareness of that. Reflex pattern, what's happening? What's going on? Can you change it? Can you make a good decision? Are you a good decision maker? Do you have some good self-management? Yes, you do. <laughs> so what happens after the event is most important. Because there will be surprises. She's a live animal. We're not going to finish here and she's like the 20 cent one, you put a coin and you just sit on and she goes the same every day. <coughs> the weather changes, the hormones change, things change, she becomes smarter. But what you want is that she's 99% of the time, you're going towards that, that you can trust that she will do what you want her to do most of the time. And if something happens, she's able to bring herself back. And if she gets a little bit nervous and she needs some guidance from you, you can give a little guidance, not constraint, control, more things that are going to make her more tense. So following the body. Oh. So the continual explanation. And we just 
then take the experience of the environment to a higher and higher level so that there's nothing that you will experience in your first ride that is going to unsettle the whole program. If a bird flies up, if it's the husband starts the tractor, if there's something goes on, she's going to know what it is she has to do with herself in that moment. And you just allow this, this self-management to develop more and more and more. She becomes secure in herself, in everything she's going to experience. There are no questions anymore. What the hell do I do now? What is it they want from me? Oh, I have no toolkit. Shit, nothing in here. Go back to the predict and protect. So uploading all the software and all the information that's necessary that she doesn't fail in any life exam that she will experience. So this is step one. The nice thing is you have possibly the most sweetest mare you could possibly find. <laughs> she really wants to do the right thing. And you see how quickly when she knows what it is, it's there. If I'm here now, external distraction. Oh, I have to focus on myself and then I have to fix myself. I have to come back to the lesson and relax and be here. And she, this is not without a good course with a good disposition, with a willingness to learn and to want to be with humans and to enjoy and experience things that make her feel good. And the nice thing is, we always try to avoid the disasters and the trauma and the things that go wrong. But for a horse like this, I think in some ways she will be better from it in the end. She will be grateful. Ah, oh, thank God, somebody I lived in the beginning in so much fear and I didn't know what the hell to do with myself and now someone explained it in a way that I understand and phew, that just whoo I'm glad I'm got a life with humans I was thinking I wanted to live out with the butterflies and be away from humans and now I have the skills to want to live happily and without stress so She's ready to go in the box because I think if we upload any more information in this first session, it just starts coming out the back end or out the other ear. You can see she wants to lie down and have a sleep now. <laughs> so I'll allow you to take her back to the stable and then we'll continue our journey further along the way. <laughs> Good girl. That's mum, she's coming back to get you. <laughs> so, but I have some new skills. Maybe I don't need mummy all the time. Maybe I can show mummy what to do now. Thank you for allowing you so me some time with your beautiful horse. Thank you so much. <laughs> really nice. You did a great job. We will continue. She will have a, a wonderful future. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> that, that, that was beautiful. Yes. A nice, sweet, intelligent horse that just needed some help. Yeah. And Simona's husband is in the back. He says, I can't believe what I'm seeing. They got the horse back from the stable and they said, yeah, you can't ride the horse. Problem horse. Give up. Yeah. So, let's go to some questions. So, I had to make some screenshots quickly. Because the, the really good ones come and go, the good questions, huh? Yeah. Of course, we have our... Look at our... You know that these are VIP members because there's not one bum cheek moved in the whole session. <laughs> They're all probably busting to have a pee or something. They're all sitting a little. Do, 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 they, do you also have a question for Tristan? That would. No? Yeah? Shall we first go yeah. to Ali? Ali. Yeah. Now I'm getting nervous. I didn't know the VIPs were um, going to be asking questions. How am I going to do this? Uh, I can shout. Mm. <laughs> Would 
would you replicate the same kind of procedure when you start trying to take a horse out and about? So would you lead in hand first out in the countryside and, and go through the same thing if they see something that they're scared of you just stay there and wait and do the patterns and and feel in their body what it's like to be presented with a road sign or a, a tractor or you know it's it's different when you're out there not in here yeah so of course the most important part is getting to know what are the weaknesses and what are the parts of the body and the horse that maybe go into a negative unsure, uncertain physiology that maybe questions the situation. And we know that straight away from this mare, that it's very much the front end. Same with mine, front legs. Yes. Won't move, stops, so you, roots. Yeah, so you see with the tool when we first presented the bag, and the first thing we did was loosen up this. If I have a horse that's extremely, that's had trouble with the process of navigating themselves around something, between something, over something, in the arena, in the space of education. When I go maybe the first time to a bigger arena or out into the field or in a space that is one step out from my normal working place or the beginning working place, I go then maybe through that process on the ground first. That I know, that the horse knows what to do in that situation. And then, you know, knowing what the sensation and what the patterns are when your horse goes into a sense of insecurity and then you knowing how you can guide them, management, as we explained, this horse being the front legs, sometimes it's horses that need to create the connection, horses that go quickly into a reflex reaction of tension, I'm putting a lot of my tension release points on my riding aids. So lifting the rein for this horse, for instance, will be one when, they're, when she's in the bridle and I lift the rein and I make some awareness here that she can drop. So if I'm in a situation where she starts to get a bit here, I can relax and I can say, <clears throat> what's happening here? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was just allowing the situation to get, <laughs> get over me. <laughs> and, so, and then you start to know how to be able to guide them further in the body, to be able to come further. So it's all the information you get along the way and knowing your horse and then regulating through the experience of building this horse into a riding horse and the partnership and the communication that you can then take it to the next level if you feel during the training, oh, you know, I had a choice here with this mare. With the first turn, putting my right leg on to take the first step. She goes into tension. I already felt there do I need to stop and go to tension release to remind, to explain, or can I push through this a little bit? So I already felt there through the sensation of the horse that actually I'm going to try it. I'm going to see if I can do that. So it's then not a question of going, okay, I'm going to take that first day out of the indoor. <clears throat> like what's going to happen? No, you want to be able to simulate all of those things. What's going to happen when I have to walk over something? What's going to happen when I have to get to the neighbor's rubbish bin the first time? You know, put Skippy the kangaroo in the arena. <laughs> Stand some things. Make, create the simulation of what you will experience. And test it to a point that is past your neighborhood or the place in which you are riding. So you have to be ready. You have to be prepared. You have to be able to then ride and go, there's nothing challenging us. What can I find that will <laughs> help us to overcome something else on our first ride? And having that mindset of not trying to, oh, I do, what's going to happen when I come across the neighbor's rubbish bin? No, like, be like, now I can go and look for it and see if our work and our connection and understanding is going to bring us past that point. All the VIPs are like, no, he's just said it all again. Heard it for the thousandth time. <laughs> so, I also have a question um, from Lonica. She says, Tristan is explaining a lot of new things to this gorgeous mare. How do you know when the session is enough for the horse mentally? So, it's, it's a really, really important, important question. question. And 
it starts with the conversation as it goes along. I'm feeling and measuring the engagement. So, of course, the first step was to get the horse very present and to be here and to be ready to learn. And then when I know that she's present and I have some awareness of self and she's, I have value, she starts thinking, ah, oh, he's kind of giving me some advice that's making me feel good. I'm going to engage in this. So every time I do something, maybe opening the front leg and it's a bit here and then she makes this lovely step here and she relaxes and I wait and I let her have the time with herself in order to feel the sensation of what that is like, to give it value. When the horse starts to feel that sensation and then they engage again, there's a certain period of time that that happens. Mm -hmm. And then as I go through the session, does that speed up? Which is like, yeah, I want more. I, oh, I process that really quick because I'm gathering information and having self-generated learning abilities. Like, oh, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And then if that response starts to slow down or they start to have less engagement or you just start to see that the body is no longer really aware and they don't have that sort of sensation of exactly what you're doing and they're tuned in that starts to get a little bit vague and not so fast in the response then I start to feel oh, okay the information the length of time thinking is starting to come to an end and I always try to quit before the horse starts to think I really have to like whatever he says now is just going I'm it's not possible to take in so through the work you know, you also have horses that engage more and horses that are like not interested and you have to like get some engagement, get them off the couch. So, but it's just measuring that and not thinking, you know, that you have to get 20 things done or you have to go through all the patterns. On some horses, it might just be in the beginning, the awareness work. It takes them so long to want to even pay attention to themselves that, you know, you might start with that, it might be five minutes. And you're like, okay, okay that, that took, took some real, real you know, concentration and, and some real communication to get there. Maybe I put him away there and I bring him out again. So it's just measuring that. But very much for me, it's about that engagement time. If they're no longer wanting to be in the conversation, I want them always to say, come on, tell me more. And I want to put them away before they start saying, you've told me enough. <laughs> yeah, because then they don't. It doesn't. Absorb yeah, anymore. exactly. I have a related question about distraction, uh, but I do want to uh, tell everybody who's watching that we're going to do a giveaway with the Starting Young Horses course. Um, so very we're gonna appropriate. Yeah, very appropriate. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to pick a winner after this final question. Um, and it's from Annette. What do you do when the horse gets really distracted when you're working with them? Do you request them to pay attention? So, so as, as we explained in the very beginning, I'm not ever trying to demand the attention. If they're looking away, I don't want them to think of me in that moment. I want them to be thinking of themselves. So we use that phrase that we want to be able to let them learn the switch between external distraction and internal focus. Some horses will use the external distraction to get away from this situation. Later on during the session when they've had enough, yes. that you don't think, oh, he's just being dis distracted, yes. he's just had enough. Yes. And, and feeling the, where, where the cycle, cycle of energy is going. Is it going up? Is it going away? Is it here? Mm. But, but for me, if you start to, again, a demand the attention, then you're getting into a control situation again. He has to listen to me, you get more into the dictator box instead of staying in the mentorship. And someone that, if you want to really, if you really want to be with somebody, then that person is not saying, hey, no. stay with me. No. You have to be clever in giving some value and giving some sound advice that the horse wants to connect with you. The other part about that is that awareness of the space, spatial awareness, where are they within the space? And if their attention and awareness comes to their body, they're not here. They start to be here. And when it's coming in a way that it's about them then and you're giving them the understanding of how to create a body that feels nice to be in they want to be here yeah. if you're only just doing stuff with them and then 
they're looking for another owner or looking for another exercise or another seven games or something else, you know, then you're in that struggle. You're in that conflict of stay here, be here. So you're basically not like saying, oh, I'm over here, but you're sort of starting to make them feel good. So they think, hey, wait a second. Yeah. yeah. And that spatial awareness is that it gives them a task in which is achievable and being able to think and engage through their visual system of this is the space, straight away you are already mm. yeah. giving some calm, reducing all the thoughts, the unnecessary ones, yeah. and they start to feel comfortable. It's like, oh, the only thing I have to think about is this. And this cycle of energy changes in the body that gives them the feeling of rest. Distraction, looking in the distance, is not rest. You're taking the level of energy up into the future, expectation, what is there, what could possibly be there, and then you're getting into a state of stress. So when you're starting to turn that down into a space of relevance and presence, then all this starts to just disappear by itself. You feel the calmness and actually this is the place they want to be in the end. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so to pick a winner from the Starting Young Horses course, we're doing our famous scroll up and scroll down. The, like the drum roll and the, I'm not looking, and name out of the hat. Yeah, ready? so I'm ready. Now we have to do it again. She's already a member. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Connie knows all the 50,000 people that are on the online. I picked one of the hundreds of questions. Oh, oh, oh. I have to go back. One sec. Drum roll. Oh, oh. The winner. Oh, wait, wait. Of oh. Starting the Young Horse course, knowing how to do everything we did tonight and more. Yes. It's Miria. It's Puntinen. Puntinen. Again, thank you, Tristan. That's what she said. So, Miria, please send us a message and we'll make sure you have uh, access. And I think Tristan. For everybody who's interested in starting Young Horses scores, send us a DM on social media or an email and we're going to send you a special offer with a discount. It's not live, so if you're interested and want to know more about this, you have like step-by-step -step training. And um, yeah, thank you so much for tonight. I think it was really amazing what yeah. we've seen. Very special mare. Thank you again, Connie. Thank, thank you all you guys for being here. And a very special thank you to our <laughs> VIP is coming from all corners of the globe. It's always a pleasure to have you guys here. And I hope you guys learned something or found something entertaining, if not interesting. We'll see you again next time. <laughs> Ta -da. Now normally the music starts, you know, and then, but this is virtual, so <laughs> you finish and then